Hi everybody, thank you for watching this video. My name is Sarah and I am going to talk to you today about keto and how it's affecting my life and uh, what I'm currently doing. So hopefully this thing will stop trying to focus because I'm right here. <laughs> uh, first off, I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, what I'm currently doing because I'm five months in and um, stepped on the scale uh, the morning of the 6th, which was technically this morning because I haven't gone to bed yet. Um, and I was 265 pounds, which is 95 pounds down, five more pounds, and I hit my 100 pounds lost mark. And I am super excited. And the reason I wanted to talk about that is because I started a cut four days ago. Um, and when I say cut, I don't mean like I cut my calories cause I didn't, I just changed my calories from fat centric to protein centric. I went down to about 50% of my calories being fat and upped it to about 30% of my, uh, wait, 50, 40, 45% of my calories coming from protein and still only the 5% coming from carbs. Um, and so that has been extremely effective. Um, because like almost immediately I stopped feeling so bloated all the time and I realized that I was just, I had too much fat in my diet before. So I'm pretty sure 50% is too little, but since I'm cutting and I have so much that it, my body can eat right now, I think it'll be okay. Um, so yeah, 265.4 pounds as of this morning. Um, so I'm extremely excited. And I also started a bullet journal because Meg Squats is like, start a bullet journal. And I did use a ruler. It's around here somewhere. Uh, so my lines are straight-ish. <laughs> Even if they're diagonal, they're at least straight. Anyway, uh, so I just started filling it in and I haven't colored it or anything because I was busy coloring other things. Like my beautiful sunflower. I drew this today. I love sunflowers. I draw them a lot. It's a weird habit, I guess. Anyway. Um, so yeah, today is cut day cut day four. Also I do intermittent fasting, so I am strict keto. Right. So 20 carbs or less a day. Um, I also really like to make sure that my uh, eating window stops about five hours before I go to bed. So I intermittent fast uh, 16, 8 and I start eating at 11 and I stop eating at 7. And um yeah, other than that, it's just normal stuff. I mean, I eat vegetables in moderation and meat and cheese and a lot of protein shakes. I'm going to be real. That's how I get my protein. A lot of protein shakes. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and insert a scale picture here. Hopefully. <laughs> um, all right. So this is where we're going to get to, I wanted to get the, the good happy stuff out of the way. Uh, sorry about that y'all. It is like 1 and 30 in the morning. I wanted to get to uh, a little bit of the heavier part of this. So if you guys saw my last video, you know that I started keto. August 28th of 2018 at 360 pounds as verified by my doctor. Um, every single day I hurt in some way, shape, or fashion. Not just at 360 pounds though. Always. I have never known not pain. It's never been a I didn't realize how much pain I was in until I stopped being in pain. 
if that makes sense. So, um, had a very carb heavy diet. So inflammation was of course like sky high. I was constantly taking meds to help with inflammation. I was retaining water constantly. I mean, this is started when I was 14 and didn't end until I was 30. <laughs> so just a constant carbs and sugar and hungry and carbs and sugar and hungry and carbs and sugar and hungry and the, the binging and the purging and well that's a different video but I didn't feel good if food didn't make me feel good I would have hunger headaches and then I would eat because I thought that I was hungry but I would just feel worse after that Every time I felt worse. Every time I put food in my mouth, it felt bad. It really ruined my relationship with food because I couldn't keep it down, but I was still getting fat. Um, so I stopped trusting food a lot, which is kind of a bad thing. I developed an eating disorder. Um, also developed fibromyalgia. Uh, depression, anxiety, a whole bunch of other things that can't necessarily be attributed to carbs, uh, but can be attributed to being unhappy and in pain and inflamed all the time. If you're in pain all the time, you're going to be depressed. That's, that's just how it is. Um, but it's just like... I was so sick. I would get sick at the littlest thing, like the littlest little thing and allergies would send me into a spiral of ick and I couldn't force myself to care about anything other than laying on the couch and not feeling bad. Um, like my, my house became kind of a disaster area. It looked like a wreck um I didn't have any spoons to clean I barely had no spoons to cook and keep the kitchen up I just didn't have it in me and so for a while I tried Camp Gladiator that was about two years ago three years ago now because it's 2019 holy crap on toast um so a few years ago, we tried Camp Gladiator, and, you know, I did not lose weight at Camp Gladiator. Um, I gained 60 pounds doing Camp Gladiator. But it is not Camp Gladiator's fault. It is my fault. I was hungry, and I ate a lot. I would go sometimes to two or three boot camps a day, at least one a day, but sometimes I would double or triple, and um, that meant I was wasting like a lot of energy, and so I kept eating carbs to carbo load up so I would have more energy, and I just, I kept gaining weight and feeling like shit, and you know, I was gaining like cardiovascular health a little bit, but... <laughs> I mean, what, what does it matter if I can do 15 burpees if I am gaining 60 fucking pounds? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Nutrition is the backbone of any diet. <laughs> if anybody tells you any different, they're crackhead. Um, it was just, it was very hard. It was just very hard to exist at that size. Um, society doesn't like you when you're fat and you're... <laughs> in-laws don't really like you when you're fat and your internet trolls don't really like you and you're fat I, I mean internet trolls don't like anybody but I, you never really believe that people like you when or I didn't when I was 360 pounds I was like oh they're just tolerating my existence or um you know whatever but that's all part of the 
society kind of imprints in us that if you're overweight, you're not worthy. And it just ties into the whole emotional toll of being overweight thing. I'm not suggesting that being overweight is bad. Um, and I, I think the term overweight is also kind of bullshit. Uh, overweight is compared to what? <laughs> Another human? Who is completely different than you in every way, including their blood work and DNA. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? So, uh, whatever. Uh, that's a soapbox. I don't need to get on. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. And you may ask yourself, if she's on keto and losing weight, why is she talking about body positivity and why being overweight doesn't matter? Uh, and it's because I didn't start losing weight because I felt unattractive. I... I've always found myself to be attractive. Narcissistic moment. Um, but, I mean, it's true, right? I think that I have a, a physically attractive face. It's fairly symmetrical. I've got these little things that say I've got sharp cheekbones going on. And and that's something that people like. And I have a long neck. So, I am aware that the components that make up my face and the shape of my body, which happens to be hourglass are attractive. And, and I'm not, I was never, I never really felt ugly, but I never really felt beautiful either. If you know what I, if that makes any sense, felt like maybe this symmetrical face was a little wasted. Also, it's not that symmetrical. This ear is higher up. It's fucking annoying. Um, I mean, I'm trying to figure out how else to, I just, I was so sick all the time. I had no energy. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to do anything but like eat sugar constantly. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of that was, you know, sugar addiction, trying to get the sweet high or whatever, but I just didn't feel good. And I didn't start losing weight because I wanted to look a certain way. I started losing weight because I wanted to feel a certain way. I want to feel not in pain all the time. Um, so that leads me to where I am today. <laughs> um, with a weird desire to be active that I have to battle and balance with my need to rest and recuperate after the intense workouts that Steph and I put ourselves through. Um, another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about are my top five keto survival tips for your first month. My first tip is to always carry snacks and water with you. I want you to be a camel. I want you to have meat sticks and I want you to have parm crisps and I want you to have whatever snackage you need that will keep you full and satiated and enough of it to keep you full and satiated all day, right? So make sure you have enough of it. And big old bottles of water. Carry two if you're not at somewhere where you can easily refill them. I'm not joking. You're going to be thirsty constantly. Keto gives you dry mouth like you would not believe. It is Keto is the diet where you are not hydrated. <laughs> You constantly drink water and you constantly pee it out. <laughs> um, another thing I want to suggest for one of my top five tips for month one survival is count your carbs only. Do not count your calories. You gotta, you gotta start up here, right? You gotta start up here and then slowly taper yourself down. And honestly, if you look at all of the websites out there that tell you how you're supposed to lose weight, they're going to tell you that when you start the keto diet, you're supposed to be eating like 2,700 calories a day. I mean, just, it depends on who you are and your size and everything. So go look it up, but it wants you to eat a lot. <laughs> Um, and you'll slowly taper that down and you'll still keep losing weight because your body is doing it the right way. Anyway, off that soapbox. Um, this one's really funny, but you guys, you guys, this is important. 
until you stop having loose bowel movements, do not trust a fart. Ever. Also, carry a spare change pants because you got to pee all the time. You're going to piss yourself. I swear to God, traffic's going to happen. Just, just do it. Just do it. Just embrace the fact that <laughs> your pelvic wall or floor isn't as strong as it used to be and wear a panty liner. Whatever you need to do to get through the day. But keto is... Uh... <laughs> it's a fun one to start with. That's for sure. <laughs> um... Yeah, and never try to do squats if you haven't gone to the bathroom that day. That's another one. It's a bonus one. <laughs> the things I've seen. Um, oh, fourth. Uh, or fifth, as the case may be. Get a hobby that requires brain stimulation. You're going to go to the gym, I hope. But if you don't go to the gym... What are you going to do with all the energy that you're going to get from keto? I'm not joking, guys. Like, you don't have to do any kind of exercise on keto and you'll lose weight. You will absolutely lose weight. But you are going to be imbued with the creepy keto powers that give you an insane amount of energy. Usually uh, right when you want to take a nap <laughs> or go to bed. Um... The fuel that you are, that your body is now adapting to use, right? Uh, that fuel is such a higher purity that it can handle both your brain processes and your muscles and all of everything. It doesn't, it doesn't run out like the glycogen does, right? You have like a nearly endless supply of fat. <laughs> Um, so you're going to need, you're not going to be tired is what I'm trying to say. You're going to need a hobby that simulates your brain. Uh, find people online to play chess with, or find people online to play risk with, or find people, uh, nearby to play risk with, or something, start Sudoku, something, do something to occupy your brain. Because if you don't, you're not ever going to be tired enough to sleep and you need sleep. Even if you're only getting three to four hours a night, you still need some really good quality REM sleep. Okay, so tire your brain out so that you can get some. Uh, alrighty. Finally, we have the fifth or in this case sixth because I gave you a bonus one um, keto survival tip is to remember there's no competition this is literally you and your body and at the rate that you lose weight is the rate that is perfect for your body I have lost a ridiculous amount of weight but I weighed a ridiculous amount and so you know you got to remember that um, if you are only 20 pounds overweight it may take you a year to lose 20 pounds but it's gonna stay gone because you're adapted to fat you're um, living this lifestyle now you've you now understand what fuel works for you and what doesn't and that is that's the goal, right? So the goal is just to be healthy and the time is going to pass regardless. So there's no rush. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and put my blog, uh, link in the doobly doo and I'm going to, uh, put my Instagram in the doobly doo as well. Uh, please like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, I would love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much for your time, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Mm -hmm.